back to another school year here at Brilliant Labs. My name's Jacob. And I'm K.O. And we're really excited to see all the projects that you're ultimately going to create across the Atlantic region. Students and teachers are doing some incredible things and we can't wait to support you. And what better way to start off the school year with our first innovation challenge? I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's do it. I think I'm ready. Let's go. Let's make something brilliant. So obviously, from that introduction, you likely already know the theme of this first innovation challenge, right? Yeah, I think so. It's yeah. pretty obvious, even with this stuff on the table. It's Halloween, right? So what is the specific goal that we're looking for teachers and students to create over the next little while? Right, so what we wanted to do was kind of put a brilliant twist on Halloween, and we want to challenge you guys for this month to build and create your own brilliant Halloween prop. Now in order to do that, we have two words in this challenge. So it's brilliant labs, actually more than two words, but there are two words in particular that you should be paying attention you to. You should focus on those, right? right? Yeah. And that's hacking and animatronics. It's, after all, it's the Brilliant Labs Halloween Hacking and Animatronics Challenge. Right. Maybe we could have chosen a shorter title, but I think it works. It works, yeah, it right? helps describe it. So why don't we break those up? Why don't we start off with hacking? Yeah, right? absolutely. So for a long time, hacking wasn't that big of a deal. You know, you took an item, you broke it down, you repurposed it, you made it your own. Now, when you listen to the news and you're, you hear hacking, it's usually about some criminal activity and hacking into large corporations, servers, and banking. We're not doing that. We're going back to our roots, being inspired by something that you see on a shelf. And you're like, hey, I can make this my own and repurpose it in some way. Um, I think the cats that you spend a lot of time working on, it's a brilliant example, no pun intended, <laughs> of hacking. hacking. Yeah, so with that idea of that definition of hacking, I guess, um, this is a really good example. When we were out shopping for some Halloween props this year, uh, going through the different stores and things, we came across this cat um, who was already automated. Yeah. He was already sort of doing a lot of different things, uh, a lot of things you'd expect from a Halloween prop. Uh, it actually had a sound sensor inside. And when it heard things, heard a sound, it would make a loud noise, like a cat noise, super annoying, but yeah. uh, its jaw moved and the lights would light up in its eyes. And we thought, that's really cool. We were gonna take that, but then maybe improve it, make it a little bit different, kind of make it our own, a bit hack more it. unique and hack it. Yeah. Right. So we spent a lot of time working on this, used a little Makey Makey in our computer, and we came up with this design. I'm just gonna play it for us right now. <laughs> if that's not the definition of hacking, I don't know what is. And I, I love it because, I mean, everyone knows the Scratch Cat and that horrific, no, it's not horrific, but that's kind of fitting annoying, with Halloween, annoying, annoying sound that it makes. So, <laughs> poor Scratch Cat, he's seen better days, but at least now his uh, reason for being is a little more interesting. Yeah, and more right? entertaining or more something. More entertaining, yeah. So exactly. we took that Scratch sound, the, the Cat Scratch sound, tied it to this guy and kind of played around with the, uh, the motion there that it usually right. did, right? So right. Kind of cool. So that's hacking. I get that. What about animatronics? Yeah, so animatronics is a little bit different. Um, when we usually delve into fields like robotics and things, we kind of talk a bit about anim animatronics as well. Things that move. Yeah, things that move, really, right? Animatronics just basically talks about something that moves or is automated um, to become more lifelike, right. right? So it might be something that... Uh, an arm on a device that moves up and down when you push buttons right. or something like a head that turns or jaws right. that open. This is kind of animatronics too and things, right? right. Um, but we already talked about this one. We also have our clown <laughs> example here and it is a perfect example of animatronics. Maybe well, we should talk a bit about that. Eh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You say perfect example. You talked about animatronics <laughs> being lifelike. Uh, I don't know if this is really that lifelike. I mean, my hair has looked like that a couple of times in my life. But I think that's more like my hair. Today, yeah, yeah. Of the... <laughs> Throw a red little clown hat on you and away you go. That's You're me, all set. Right? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, this is an excellent example of animatronics. It wasn't really animated very much when we purchased this. This is actually a lawn stake, a really creepy lawn stake. Uh, and originally... In the store, the eyes lit up, and then there was a, a sound-activated box, a controller box, 
um, three meters away, okay? So you weren't really able to hear the sounds uh, when you actually saw the lights light up on this animated clown head, or not really animated clown head. <laughs> so we took a little time and really brainstormed on what would make this clown even more animatronic. And without telling you any more, let's take a look. <laughs> So that is the definition of animatronics. Yeah, you totally. have something that moves, it lights up, it's scary. <laughs> I mean, I remember going to restaurant. Okay, we gotta stop this. I remember going to uh, restaurants as a kid, and they had all of those singing bears and animatronics, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. they weren't Halloween creepy. No, they were kind no. of creepy in their own right, I think right? They were, yeah. Not that animatronics is synonymous with creepy, but we think it's a really neat way for you to take a look at what you can create around your school using the equipment and the supplies uh, that you have in your maker spaces. Yeah. Uh, this is a really fun way to, uh, to hack and to animate and to create a Halloween prop. So if any of our projects you see here inspire you to create your own prop for Halloween, um, by all means get in touch with us. Um, yeah. We have lots of different ways of sharing what we've made with you. And if you have any questions on how we sort of went into this and, and hacked these, these devices, by all means contact us and we can walk you through some of the parts of it. Or if any of these inspire you to do something completely different, we Absolutely. can help you out with any troubleshooting you might have and uh, work out some ideas that you'll, uh, you're coming up with and things like that too. So if you're creating a prop at your school, you have an idea, please share it with us. Follow a link right here to our website. There, you'll see a form that you can fill out to tell us a little bit more about your Halloween prop. Um, there will be a, a question and answer if you have some issues with your code or you just want a little help or you want to tell us more about your project. We would love to see it. For the grand finale of this innovation challenge, what would be great is if you finish your project, and even if you don't finish your project and you have it, you know, three quarters of the way, it's, it's all, all about the journey that you take to get there, yeah. let us know. We'd like for you to send it to Brilliant Labs headquarters in Fredericton, and we'd like to create a Brilliant Labs haunted mansion between our uh, two rooms here. And maybe you can beam in if you're not in Fredericton uh, with our telepresence robots and tour around the two the spaces, walkers, yeah. right? So we're, we're using a lot of technology here, but this we think is really going to be something fun to get a lot of people involved. So reach out to us, let us know how we can help. And I think we may have a couple of videos of how we built each of these animatronic devices that you see here coming up in the near future, so stay tuned.